what I hope to do is uh, those three things, um, but with more on the online harm stuff. Uh, just a, a, a note on terminology, the UK government had a, uh, a white paper in 2019, which was called the Online Harms White Paper. Uh, what with one thing and another, one thing being Brexit, the other being COVID, there's been a, a delay in, in, in taking this uh, forward. And so there have been a, a number of holding responses from the government. So it was on the 15th of December that we got what has been termed the government full response. And that is uh, setting out what they propose to do this year. Um, and they have changed the name. So it isn't going to be the online safety bill, not the online harms bill. So uh, just uh, in case that confuses anyone why it's suddenly uh, changed name. Uh, some background, Yang kindly mentioned the, the Carnegie work. Uh, I've just got a, a, a brief summary up here. And the reason I'm mentioning it is because we propose what we have called a systemic uh, approach. And by that, I mean that we think the focus of regulatory attention should be the platform itself and not try and do mass content regulation. Um, we're not proposing to change the existing rules that, that, that exist with regards to, to content regulation, you know, sort of, uh, I don't know, privacy or, or, or whatever there is, but that in terms of what the platform should be responsible for, they should be responsible for um, the product they provide, the business that they run. So this is what we've called the systems approach. And it's based on a risk uh, assessment. So um, the way the platforms are designed do have an impact on how we interact with, with content. And so our view is that at the very least, the platform should be looking at uh, the features they provide uh, their users and, and to look at what the likely consequences are. So obvious uh, things to think about would be the recommender uh, algorithms or the recommender machines, uh, which have come in for um, a, a reasonable amount of um, coverage, how the default settings work, um, what personalization does, these sorts of things. Now, the vehicle we proposed is based in the UK legal system. We proposed a statutory duty of care, uh, which does have uh, connections with uh, the, the principles in the law of tort uh, and negligence, because what we're talking about is what is reasonably foreseeable. We're not looking for perfection. And uh, we propose that there should be a regulator for this. Importantly, it should be an independent regulator. So independent from government, independent from industry. And we thought, what about Ofcom? It doesn't regulate enough of the world already. Um, so let's add to its burdens. Um, and for anyone who wants to, to, to see what we said, I, I just put our, the link to our report up there. So the Online Harms White Paper adopted what it called a systemic approach. It proposed safety by design, uh, and it suggested that there should be a statutory duty of care. And in the full government response for the Online Safety Bill, we see quite a few similarities uh, to this. So <clears throat> what the government is saying it's going to introduce is a general duty of care in relation to certain specified categories of harm. And this is going to be based on a risk assessment the companies 
um, carry out. Uh, Ofcom will be regulating this, so the risk assessment will be overseen. And Ofcom will also have a responsibility to develop codes of practice, explaining what good looks like in terms of um, how likely uh, harms might arise, uh, what good practice for technology is, for design features is, those sorts of things. Now, there have been two interim codes of practice published by uh, the government. Uh, these relate to child sexual abuse and exploitation material and to terrorism. And they're sort of holding the ground uh, between now and when this bill actually becomes law. So that those are voluntary in, in, in the way um, in form, but I think in practice there is a strong incentive for the platforms to um, cooperate with that. Ofcom, as I said, will regulate, but it will also be uh, cooperating with other regulators, we think, in particular, the Information Commissioner's Office. Um, a lot of the business model relates to uh, data profiling and advertising, but also another key regulator is the Competition and Markets Authority. So they've set up a forum already to share best practice, share knowledge uh, and to coordinate. The enforcement is going to be uh, in relation to compliance with the duty of care, and it's not going to be about individual items of content. It's not going to be, oh, there was this piece of bad stuff still up there, therefore you're in breach. If the platform can show that they have done a risk assessment, put reasonable measures in place, that's going to be the key factor, not um, the content per se. Now, obviously, if you've got lots of bad content, you might say, have you done your duty of care uh, properly? And the whole uh, regime that we used to see under the e-commerce directive uh, is going to be remaining in place. Um, I don't know whether the government has plans to bring in a Good Samaritan clause, such as we now see uh, proposed with the Digital Services Act. Now, I think one advantage of the systemic approach is that because it doesn't focus so much on trying to define what good content is and bad content is, it is less context, uh, less susceptible to context. So I think that if we see other states going for um, lots of specificity about what good content is and what bad content is, we might see more fragmentation between the different national regimes. Maybe if we see variants of a systemic approach, there's less risk of that. Though obviously use of a statutory duty of care may be specific uh, to the UK because it's actually gonna be quite framework with a lot of the detail um, put in place through the codes of conduct. So who's within the scope? Well, um, there's two sorts of main uh, categories there, services which host user-generated content, which can be accessed by users in the UK, or services which facilitate public or private online interaction between service users one or more of whom is in the UK. So that's indicating we might have some extraterritorial effect that the key point is, is it accessed in the UK? Um, the government has specifically said that search engines are in, even though they don't specifically fit in either of those two categories. But there's a whole range of services that the government has uh, taken out. So not journalism, uh, that's already regulated or subject to self-regulation. Uh, business to business services, though query, now we've all been online um, in Zoom and Meet and goodness knows what else, 
whether that can still be maintained. There are concerns about threats to, for example, children using uh, business services for um, schooling, for keeping up with friends. They've limited it to, uh, if you like, quite close contact with the users. So uh, internet service, internet access providers seem to be out of scope and low risk with a limited functionality. That's the quote from the, uh, the government response. Uh, the Secretary of State uh, talks about cheese shop reviews as an example of that. Um, I don't go to online cheese shops, so I don't know quite what functionality they have, but there you go. Um, what is the test? Well, the quote is there. Uh, content and activity, and I think that's important that we're not just focusing on content, but maybe the functionality, the way that the, 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 the platforms themselves work. Uh, that give rise to a reasonably foreseeable risk. So that's our good old standard negligence duty of care sort of threshold. Significant physical or psychological impact on individuals. So that last phrase has some consequences for what's out. So societal harms appear to be out. Um, as do harms for, for businesses and financial and consumer protection harms insofar as they're not physical or psychological um, are out. Now, although dangerous goods might give rise to physical harm, it seems that those by contrast to what is looking like the DSA are out of the regime. And um, the government's equivocated on uh, misinformation, suggesting that misinformation that causes harm, uh, physical harm, could be in. So they've said COVID misinformation or inciting um, a riot. But this all leads to the question of how close, what close a connection um, does the regime need to be? They've differentiated. And this is limiting the sorts of harms so that as a general rule, um, harms arising from criminal content or harms arising to children must be covered by every platform. For category one platforms, they also have to think about uh, legal but harmful, but it's not quite clear what's in this category. And in particular, there have been concerns about legal behaviour that is a precursor uh, to illegality. Now, some of the content, for example, non-suicide self-injury, which is legal, but if you're pushing it at people constantly, may give rise to uh, concerns. The government's suggesting that they're going to um, extend the, the meaning of illegal, which I'm slightly concerned about. Those wanting to uh, look at the detail, the Law Commission of England and Wales has done some reviews on this. And this is the other point, that there may be a different position for criminal law in the different countries of the United Kingdom. I don't know how much constraints from other regimes will also affect this. I've put a reference to the Age Appropriate Design Code under the Data Protection Act. So a summary, assess the risk from the service, take down illegal content expeditiously, make sure your moderation and user reporting and redress systems are effective, They've said that you should prevent illegal content from spreading further. There's a hint that it might be discouraging illegal content from appearing in the first place, but I'm not quite sure what that means. Legal but harmful are dealt with essentially through terms and conditions, but the government's going to specify 
priority areas that have to be dealt with and uh, more generally the nature of the service has to be made clear and the government has said this is not just about takedown but safety by design. Briefly the usual sorts of uh, enforcement processes. Um, the government has said it's going to legislate for senior management liability but not bring that un into force. It's going to be a a sort of Damocles uh, hanging over the platforms if they don't get this right. Then briefly, Competitions and Markets Authority is the existing regulator for consumer protection and competition matters in the UK. And I have put some examples there on the slide of it using it, its existing powers in this field. There have been a number of reports in this area. There was the Furman Review. The CMA carried out a, a market study. Uh, more recently uh, still, there's been a Penrose report. And there was, as a result of the Furman Review, a Digital Markets Task Force. And they've come up with uh, similar sorts of recommendations and what they're they're saying is that there is this huge imbalance we all know this um, and they are focusing on uh, those firms with strategic market status and that is those with substantial entrenched market power that gives them a strategic position and they are going to identify this, they think, uh, by reference to the revenue of the company, uh, the activities that the company carries out, and also to look at uh, whether there is a relevant sector regulator. You can see on the slide that they are proposing uh, three um, elements, a code of conduct, uh, pro-competitive measures and a special regime for uh, SMS mergers. So the code of conduct is aiming at uh, constraining SMS platforms and stopping exploitation with regards to others in the, in the chain. So this may be where we see similarities to what uh, Faith was talking about in Australia. It is going to be outcome based and focus on the core activities. The pro competitive measures are trying to tackle some of the entrenched positions. Uh, so I've put a couple of examples uh, up there dealing with data availability, interoperability, access to platforms, fair, reasonable and non discriminatory terms and uh, the ability for users to play with defaults. So those um, are just examples. We're waiting for government action uh, in terms of the extent to which legislative change is uh, needed, but the Specialist Digital Markets Unit, which is set up inside the Competition and Markets Authority, is going to be starting work in April on putting in more detail. There's one final point that came out of the task force, which is recommendations to strengthen consumer protection powers to bring them more in line with competition powers. And I just also like to flag up that uh, the CMA has got the equivalent of the CPC regulation powers that have been carried over with Brexit. I know I'm over, one last slide, uh, just sustainable journalism. Faith mentioned the uh, Ken Cross review uh, from a few years ago. Um, similarities to the conclusions in the uh, CMA market study in relation to digital advertising. There don't seem to be that much in the way of specific implementation from this, though the government seemed to agree with a lot of it. I think the intention is that um, 
some of this will be picked up through CMA activities and in particular the code of conduct, but also question whether they're envisaging the online safety and in particular recommender algorithms uh, supporting um, journalism and journalistic outputs. We're also awaiting uh, what's happening with Ofcom's review of public service broadcasting. Apparently public service broadcasting is hugely valuable, uh, both for viewers and for uh, journalists, but according to Ofcom, it won't survive in the current environment without more help. <laughs>